SpaceX's Starship's ninth test flight is approaching. While we're excited, there's also a bit of nervousness. After two consecutive failures, is the ship truly ready? Today, I'll go over all the challenges Starship Block 2 is facing, and from there, we'll explore what SpaceX needs to do to ensure the ship survives this upcoming flight. When discussing Starship Block 2 issues, we need to start with Flight 7, as it marks the first flight of this version. During this flight, the upper stage disintegrated about eight minutes after launch, breaking into thousands of pieces that fell toward the Turks and Caicos Islands. SpaceX's investigation has determined the cause of the accident. According to the official report, the flight induced a harmonic resonant load on the power elements of the engine system, which was much higher than what ground tests had predicted. These abnormal harmonic oscillations caused damage to the fuel supply lines, including methane leaks that ignited fires in Starship's engine compartment. The flames spread to the unpressurized attic, the space between the fuel tanks and the heat shield, used for piping, wiring, and other auxiliary systems. Such areas can accumulate hot gases or contribute to the spread of flames in the event of a fire. Once a fire ignites in these confined spaces, the consequences are often catastrophic. Almost all of the engines shut down in an emergency, except for one. After that, the ship lost control and communication was lost within seconds. As per protocol, the autonomous flight termination system detonated the malfunctioning vehicle. After this flight, SpaceX conducted a one-minute static fire test and implemented some fire protection measures. But looking at the results of Flight 8, it doesn't seem like they were very helpful. Flight 8 nearly met the same fate as its predecessor. Once again, harmonic oscillations in the methane supply system were the primary factor. However, this time, the effects of the resonance were more severe. While during Flight 7, one of the six Starship propulsion systems remained operational until the end of the flight, Flight 8 likely experienced a critical failure much earlier. Oscillations in the fuel lines caused them to rupture near the RVAC engines at the lower section. A particularly dangerous moment occurred when the main liquid oxygen tank was nearly empty. When the tank was full, the liquid column helped dampen vibrations, but as the fuel burned off, the pipelines lost this damper, causing the amplitude of the vibrations to increase dramatically. As a result, several methane fuel lines depressurized simultaneously. High pressure methane surged into the intertank compartment, sparking a rapid fire. The blast wave from the fire likely ruptured the turbo pump of one of the vacuum raptors and damaged the adjacent central engine. The damage to the nozzle's regenerative cooling system, which circulates fuel to remove heat from the chamber walls. Almost instantly, all engines lost thrust and shut down. With no active stabilization, the ship began an uncontrolled rotation, which was captured on telemetry video. As per protocol, the emergency detonation system eliminated the vehicle at a high altitude. Additionally, hot staging could have a significant impact. While Starship Block 2 features upgraded propulsion systems to support a larger stage, the booster's hot staging ring is still the Block 1 version, which could lead to a more violent process. This could create a series of reflected shock waves emanating from the hot stage, reverberating back into the S-34's engine compartment. These shock waves are likely to be highly chaotic, potentially imposing substantial loads on various components within the engine bay, such as the nozzles, plumbing, engine mounts, and dome bulkhead. The vibration issue Starship is facing closely resembles pogo oscillation, a common technical challenge in rocketry. Pogo oscillation is a self-excited vibration phenomenon observed in liquid propellant rocket engines, primarily driven by combustion instability. This instability causes fluctuations in the engine's thrust, which in turn induces oscillations in the vehicle's acceleration. These variations affect the vehicle's flexible structure, leading to changes in propellant pressure and flow rate, thus completing the feedback loop of self-excitation. The term pogo oscillation is a metaphor, likening the longitudinal vibrations to the bouncing motion of a pogo stick. This oscillation imposes significant stress on the rocket's frame and, in extreme cases, can pose serious risks to the vehicle's structural integrity. The question now is, 
SpaceX had already successfully flown Starship Block 1, so why did these issues only emerge after upgrading to Block 2? Well, it turns out that it's these new upgrades that are causing the company's current headaches. One of the upgrades is a change to the propulsion system. In the V2 modification, the total fuel supply was increased by approximately 25%, the piping configuration was revised, and additional lines and joints were introduced. Both Starship versions 1 and 2 are powered by six Raptor engines. Fuel is delivered to the engines through four downcomers. Three smaller ones supply the vacuum Raptors, while the central downcomer feeds the inner three engines. The central downcomer is connected to a large sump instead of directly to the methane tank. In the Block 1 design, there is a single downcomer, whereas the Block 2 configuration introduces two additional downcomers, one for methane and one for oxygen, routed from the header tanks. Additionally, a LOX downcomer extends into the LOX tank. Due to the addition of these new pipes, the structure became less rigid, leading to the emergence of a resonance during flight that had not been observed in prior tests. The standard exhaust valves and nitrogen fire suppression system were unable to remove or dilute the combustible gases quickly enough as the volume of leakage exceeded their capacity. Another important detail is that these feed lines are vacuum jacketed. Starship uses liquid methane, CH4, as fuel and liquid oxygen, LOX, as an oxidizer, both of which are cryogenic and stored at temperatures around minus 150 to minus 180 degrees Celsius. Rocket systems typically utilize cryogenic components or traditional propellant mixtures, such as kerosene RP1 in the Falcon 9. Self-igniting vapors like UDMH and N204 avoid the need for complex ignition systems but require additional safety precautions due to their high toxicity and corrosiveness. To ensure safety, Starship has implemented special measures for fuel storage. The tanks are made of stainless steel, which becomes stronger at extremely low temperatures. Unlike some other systems, Starship prototypes do not feature external foam insulation, as frost naturally forms on the outer surface during refueling. Instead, the fuel lines are vacuum insulated and designed as a pipe within a pipe with a vacuum between the walls to reduce evaporation. While early prototypes used conventional insulation only on lines to the small landing tanks, the latest versions feature vacuum insulation across all the main feed lines. The advantage of vacuum insulation is its exceptional ability to insulate. Heat transfer occurs through three modes, convection, conduction, and radiation. Vacuum insulation effectively eliminates convection, which relies on gas molecules to transfer heat through bulk movement. While a small decrease in pressure has little effect on the thermal conductivity of gas, because the reduction in energy carrying molecules is counterbalanced by fewer collisions between molecules, at sufficiently low pressure, the distance between collisions becomes greater than the size of the vessel, leading to a reduction in conductivity. The thermal resistance of vacuum insulation per unit thickness is roughly five times greater than that of conventional insulation, making it highly efficient at preventing heat transfer. Of course, this approach has its drawbacks. Vacuum insulated systems are more challenging to manufacture compared to materials like polyurethane foams or mineral wools. Ensuring strict quality control during the production of the membranes and sealing joints is crucial to maintaining the vacuum over an extended period. Over time, air can gradually seep in, and as the pressure inside normalizes with the surrounding environment, the insulation's R value, thermal resistance, deteriorates. In contrast, conventional insulation does not rely on the evacuation of air for its thermal performance, making it less susceptible to this type of degradation. So, what can SpaceX do to keep Starship alive through this upcoming flight? But before we dive into solving Starship's issues, you can help solve ours by clicking subscribe now. Thanks, and let's get back to the topic. Even if SpaceX identifies the cause of the Starship failure, it will need to enhance its leak and fire prevention measures. First, in the pre-flight phase, Starship will be equipped with pressure sensors and likely methane sensors. 
These sensors are designed to detect even the slightest drop in pressure or the presence of gas in an unplanned location, which would automatically trigger a launch interruption. If a leak is detected before launch, an emergency refueling shutdown is immediately initiated. The supply of fuel and oxidizer is halted and the fuel in the lines is discharged through drainage systems to ensure safety. A typical example of this occurred during Artemis 1 when liquid hydrogen leaked. After disconnecting the ground and rocket side plates at the interface, known as the quick disconnect, for the liquid hydrogen fuel feed line, teams replaced the seals on the Space Launch System rocket's core stage to address the liquid hydrogen leak detected during the Artemis Y launch attempt on September 3rd. Subsequently, both the 8-inch line, which is used to fill and drain liquid hydrogen from the core stage, and the 4-inch bleed line, which redirects some of the propellant during tanking operations, were removed and replaced. If a leak occurs at the launch complex and results in a fire, the fire extinguishing systems are automatically activated, which may include water, rain or foam, depending on the installation. Personnel at the launch site are trained to maintain a safe distance during refueling. In the event of an emergency, such as a fire or the risk of an explosion, a warning system is triggered and fire brigades from the safe zone are dispatched to extinguish the flames after the tanks have been safely discharged. That's on the ground. If a leak occurs in flight, our options are much more limited. That said, some rockets are designed to survive a single engine failure. For example, Saturn V could shut down one of its five engines and still reach orbit. Similarly, Starship could shut down a failed engine before it becomes a major issue relying on the remaining engines to safely land or even complete the mission, depending on the ship's condition. To further enhance safety, we could add an extra layer of protection by isolating the engines in separate compartments similar to Falcon 9. This way, if an engine were to explode, it wouldn't affect the other engines. SpaceX must also optimize the pipeline design to minimize potential leakage points and reduce stress on the connections. Structurally, the rocket's fuel lines can be routed inside the tanks to save weight and protect them, as seen in the Titan II design, or outside the vehicle, like the external LOX pipelines on the Saturn V. Pipe segments are connected using flanges with seals or welding, and fasteners are added at the joints to accommodate thermal expansion during the transition from cryogenic fuel temperatures to warmer sections of the system. Regarding the hot staging issue, it appears SpaceX plans to reuse Booster 14. So, to reduce heat reflection into the engine bay, SpaceX will need to implement shielding in this area. A new version is nearly a completely new ship, presenting fresh challenges. Overcoming them will deepen SpaceX's knowledge and understanding.